much. Jamani Williams hasn't even been sworn in for his next term as New York City public advocate, but he's already considering his next job. And the public advocate who just won re-election earlier this month now says he is planning to run for governor, putting him in a Democratic primary against Governor Kathy Hochul, Attorney General Letitia James, and possibly others, including Mayor Bill de Blasio. Joining us now with more on his decision, public advocate and candidate for governor, Jamani Williams, nice to have you back on Good Day. Always a pleasure, thank you. Nice to be on with both of you. And Rosanna, it was just awesome to hear you say, uh, go shorty. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Public Advocate, let's talk a little bit about what separates you from the other candidates running for governor of New York. You know, really, right now, uh, I don't think it's about any one of the candidates we're running. It's more about New Yorkers and what New Yorkers want and need at this moment in time post-pandemic. Uh, and I believe most folks are understanding that we can't go back to normal because normal didn't work for them in the first place and has been exacerbated by the pandemic and the vision that we're putting forward how we're putting forward i think is uniquely in a position to respond to that so let's talk a little bit about some of the issues that new yorkers are concerned about crime which is a problem and uh police defunding reforming where do you stand on that Public safety is a huge issue, and it's been a huge issue for, of mine. It's one where the Democrats have failed, uh, the party I belong to, has failed to, to really address in a real way and haven't had the courage to really uh, run straight toward that because it's something that people are concerned about all across the state. In what, way, in what way, public advocate? Because you're talking in very broad terms. Specifically, well, what actually, do you mean? Actually, before the spike in crime, uh, the policies that I put forward and, and have been fighting for helped us get to where we were in 2018, 2019, where we were the safest that we ever were. You asked about defund uh, and what uh, elected officials and leaders should have been doing at that time is not saying that we're going to spend time fighting with activists in the street expressing their trauma and what word to use, but really respond to that trauma with practical solutions and policies, which I've always done. Uh, but we spent so much time uh, aligning ourselves uh, with Republicans who were trying their best to use a fear instead of addressing the real issues, which is public safety. And we can do that. I put forward a lot of policies, some of which have been adopted, some of which have been funded and have been shown to work as they did when they got us to the numbers of 2018 and 2019. So does that mean that you're in favor of taking away money from the police? What I'm in favor of is, is what I've always said. We have to redefine what public safety is. Our NYPD in New York City and police departments across the state, they have a job to do. Uh, and the best way to do that is through transparency and accountability. They should be responding to acute uh, situations. Uh, and we should uh, make sure that we acknowledge that. Uh, what many people agree with on all sides is that they can't do this job by themselves. And so the question is, have agencies been resourced have they received the funding they needed? Have we structuralized a different way of looking at public safety so it doesn't just rest on all of our offices? It's unfair to them that they don't have the tools needed. It's unfair to the, the community that expects more. And most people will probably say, no, it hasn't been resourced. It hasn't been funded. And that's the question that we have to have the courage to have. But we spent time on so much of the wrong things in the past, and we're paying a price for that. I got to ask, I saw your video that you posted on Twitter um, showing your, your announcement of run for election. It's very well done, very artistic and very powerful. You do say in there that you are absolutely against stop and frisk. How would you say as potential governor work with a mayor who is saying we're going to put money towards bringing that back and that's a done deal with the mayor? How, how do you make that relationship work? Well, we actually didn't mention stop and frisk at all in the video. Uh, but I'll respond to it because, again, there, there was people who are trying to create wedges where there are none, uh, even through the height of the abuses of stop, question, and frisk. I have said and, and have always known that the ability to stop someone for uh, reasonable suspicion uh, and uh, search someone for probable cause is a tool that is needed by police all across this country. But when we think of stop and frisk, we're normally thinking of the abuses that occur, the unconstitutional stops that became policy under the NYPD during that era. That is something that everyone says that we are not going to go back to, uh, myself included. Okay, so in your video, I know you just said that, you know, 
when you are a black man under the abuses of stop and frisk, um, it makes you moving target. Stop and frisk makes you moving target. So I, I understand that that was something that you personally dealt with and you have a very personal connection with. So again, if you're working with someone as powerful as the New York City mayor, do you guys clash heads on that issue and how do you resolve that? Well, let, let's be clear, the, the mayor, uh, who we agree on a lot, and there's some things that we don't, has not said that he wants to go back to the abuse of stop, question, and frisk. The, the mayor was actually, uh, the mayor-to-be was actually in the courtroom fighting against the abuses of stop, question, and frisk. There are some issues that we disagree on, and some of those issues have been uh, things that we discussed around policing. Thankfully, we do agree a lot on the holistic approach to gun violence, and where we disagree, we disagree. But uh, how people are presenting uh, the issues of stop, question, frisk are not what uh, it actually is. And so what I'm going to spend time doing is making sure that we don't go down a road where we're spending time on the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. No one wants to bring back, including uh, Mayor-elect Eric Adams, the abuses of stop, question, frisk. I assure you that. And next time he's on, you can ask him. Uh, mm -hmm. But the, the, the tools that an officer needs has to be done with transparency, has to be done with accountability, uh, and has to be done understanding uh, that communities are asking uh, for more than just police officers. They're asking for better housing, better education, better health care. And so we should listen to them uh, when we hear those things as well. So, uh, Mr. Pub Public Advocate, a lot of people are saying you throwing your hat into the ring right now is dividing the leftist Democratic vote. Um, has anybody whispered in your ear, hey, for the good of the party, can you please drop out? Uh, people have been whispering in my ear uh, since I, I beat an incumbent in 2009 when I ran uh, for city council. Uh, but what I found with the Democratic Party, usually they're speaking about party unity. Usually uh, they're endorsing the status quo uh, a elected officials early on as a way of pushing out uh, different voices. And so we saw that uh, Jay Jacobs endorsed Kathy Hochul, uh, the, the governor Kathy Hochul, before uh, anyone even entered the race, but refused to endorse the candidate who was a Democratic nominee uh, in Buffalo. These smell and reek of politics as usual. Uh, and that shows that you can't just get rid of one person in Albany and you get rid of all the muscle memory of Albany. And our campaign uh, represents a change of that and has consistently done that throughout our career, including when I ran against uh, the lieutenant, then lieutenant governor in 2018. Right. Um, is it true that you are going to be a daddy pretty soon? Uh, God willing, with everyone's prayers, uh, yes, uh, you know, my uh, wife and I have shared uh, some of the uh, trauma and troubles uh, that we've gone through. Uh, we are both uh, people of faith, and so we're trying to match uh, our human emotions uh, with our faith. But thankfully, my wife is uh, 18 weeks pregnant, mm. uh, and uh, we're very much looking forward uh, to the Congratulations. And Thank she's you, fighting sir. cervical cancer? Uh, we found out she had cervical cancer the week before our wedding. Uh, they said they'd have to take her hysterectomy, uh, have her hysterectomy a week after the wedding. Uh, praise God, we have a miracle baby right now, and we're very excited about that, and we appreciate everybody's concerns and prayers. Happy to hear. All right. We're saying prayers for you, Jamani Williams, and your wife. All the best. Thank you, Thank you so much Thank for being on Good Day. Thank you. All right.